Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to High on Rugs. Ever since I started tufting, I've had one singular goal in mind, which is to turn my goofy little drawings into big comfy rugs. So I pulled out my sketchbook to take a little look-see and decide which one to start with. And I think I found it. There's quite a bit of detail in this drawing, so to turn it into a proper rug, we're going to need a bigger tufting frame. I put this frame together with pretty limited tools, though I would definitely recommend the miter saw if you're considering building your own frame. It just makes for much cleaner and straighter woodcuts. The frame itself is 7.5 feet tall and 4 feet 3 inches wide, with the inside dimensions measuring 5 feet 4 inches tall and 4 feet wide. Don't worry, that camera angle is a bit deceptive, I was not drilling into my own hand. I don't have a whole lot of sense, but I do have just enough not to do that. I then screwed some feet on the bottom to keep it from falling over, and some braces to, well, brace it. I built it this way so that it would have legs about 18 inches off the ground, and I wouldn't have to hunch over too much while tufting the lower parts. I would rather work on a ladder than break my back. And that's how you make a tufting frame. With that done, I've rolled out my tufting cloth and cut it to the appropriate size, about 72 inches by 54 inches. And now we can begin stretching the cloth on the frame. I start from the top and then secure the bottom and the sides. And I begin working my way all around, pulling as tight as I can, until it is tight as a drum and you get that satisfying thump when you flick it. With that done, we can now pull our image up on the laptop, which is connected to a projector. And once we have it lined up exactly where we want it, we can begin drawing. The drawing on this particular rug took far longer than any of my other projects. Pretty much every step took much longer than previously because this is by far the biggest rug I've ever made. I spent well over an hour making sure I had every line, every detail traced out so that nothing would be left out. I still managed to miss a tiny little cloud in one of the corners, but perfection doesn't exist and I say that looks pretty good. So now it's time for the fun part, starting the outline. I started with Gengar for two reasons. One because he's just awesome, almost any time I play Pokemon I have him in my party. And two, he's closest to the bottom and I just wanted to work my way up. I'm 32 years old, so when Pokemon first came out I was maybe 7 or 8. I was hooked on it instantly. They started playing the anime on Cartoon Network in the mornings when I had to get ready for school. At that time, my normal routine was to go out to the bus stop early to hang out with my friends. But admittedly, I started to stay in a little later, just so I could see how the episode ended. My friend got annoyed at this, and one day when I came out to the bus, he said, All done watching puke a ton or whatever? I never felt so roasted in my life. I still haven't recovered. But that didn't stop a young, impressionable kid like me. And guess who showed up one day wanting to trade a Venomoth for my holographic Ninetales? That same kid. Pokemon was just an irresistible force, and it still is. And if you're wondering if I made that terrible trade, and sadly I did. I regretted it almost instantly. We all know that Ninetales is way better. One of my biggest concerns when starting this project were how all these shadowy pine trees in the distance were going to turn out on the other side of the cloth. So at this point, I'm just going at it without much of a plan and hoping for the best. But overall, I think they ended up looking pretty good. Before I continued outlining all the characters, I figured I would fill in the dark forest at the bottom with black. So that way at least I could say the bottom four inches of the rug were completely finished. Now I'm just outlining all those swirly little clouds in the distance. The nice part about clouds is they can take pretty much any shape they want, so staying in the lines is not so important, and I can go a bit wild with it. A cloud is a cloud after all. And now it's time to outline the second spooky boy, Haunter. I know I just said how much I love Gengar, but Haunter is also one of my most favorite Pokemon. He's just so sinister and cool looking, with his sharp little floaty grabby hands. 
And wow, look at me go. There's lots of parts that I really sped up. It took probably 25 hours or more in total to tough this thing. And I didn't want this video to be ages long. But with Haunter outlined, we can turn our attention to Ghastly. Just like the floaty clouds, the shape of Ghastly's gas cloud is a bit open to interpretation. It doesn't have to be a set shape, and I can kind of just go nuts with it. Well, mostly still following the outline I've set for myself, but it sure is fun just letting loose on the cloth. And now I'm just putting Ghastly's pretty little face together, making sure those eyes and fangs are looking sharp and spooky. From there, we're working on the other clouds. That's right, there's two different kinds of clouds on this rug. I'm no cloud expert, so I'll just call them Swirly Boys and Fluffy Boys to differentiate them. With the Fluffy Boys completed, I'm outlining the whole rug in black to give it a nice border, and then the outlining is finished, and we're all done with the black yarn, which is great because I just ran out of it. Looks like Gengar came to the right dentist because he got those pearly whites installed in no time. Now I'm filling in Haunter and Ghastly's eyeballs. I had a hard time resisting filling in Gengar's eyes with white yarn, because it just feels natural to make all the eyes white. But we all know Gengar's got eyes as red as the devil's dick. Now we're filling in Gengar's big beautiful body with a nice grimace purple. and he's really starting to take shape. Now we're putting in his highlights, which are just a slightly lighter shade of purple. I picked up quite a few shades of purple from the place I buy my yarn, and it ended up working out very nicely. Gengar's highlight color worked as Haunter's main color, and then Haunter's highlight color worked great for Ghastly's gas cloud. Basically, I just worked into lighter shades of purple as I moved up the frame. Gengar just needs his dark purple shadow color, but we'll come back to that later. I know I said earlier that I wanted to work up from the bottom, but I ended up jumping around quite a bit. It's time to play God and put some stars in the sky. Pretty simple to do. I just made tiny little crosses, about four stitches vertically, and then another four right across it horizontally. And after doing that a couple dozen times, we're going to start filling up the topmost sky. Vertical row after vertical row, making sure not to run over my stars in the process. So now it's time for Haunter to put his purpley skin on. You know, not to get overly nostalgic, but there was something cool about the old Pokemon games before the internet was a big thing. Me and my friends would meet up at the baseball park down the street. Someone would have to bring their link cable, and we would just swap Pokemon back and forth with our Game Boys. It was a fun time, and we kind of got a little taste of that back with Pokemon Go. People going outside and interacting with Pokemon. That was pretty much it. I wish it went that quickly in real life. I'm putting some well-deserved shine on that forehead of his, as well as his pointy little fingertips and head spikes.
And finally, his pinkish flesh pit of a mouth gets filled in. And just like that, Haunter is fully completed. I would say he was easily the simplest of the three in terms of tufting. Finally time to give Ghastly some attention and fill in that lavender fart cloud of his. And now we're back to the very bottom of the frame to start filling in the background. I wanted to show the somewhat of a plan I had going to give the trees the right shape. Just going through with small lines in between every single branch. It was very time consuming but I think overall it yielded a pretty decent result. You can tell that they're trees anyways, so I'll call it a success. We're back to Gengar to give him his shadow. Just a few lines under his arms and ears. Everyone knows Gengar's armpits are a shadowy place full of danger. And now all that's left are his bright red eyes, giving him his trademark haunting appearance. Or perhaps he's just very high on this rug. And while I've got this reddish color loaded into the gun, I might as well add on Ghastly's red facial stress lines. Before doing this drawing, I don't think I ever noticed that he had these, but without them, I would imagine something would just feel kind of off. He's a very stressed floating head. Don't even bring up the tax season around him. I'm fucking comedian. Turning my attention towards the bottom again and filling in the swirly boys with a lovely shade of blue. then making short work of the next three background layers. At this point, I was getting very excited and relieved that I was nearing completion without any catastrophic failures. The only mistake I really made was that I tufted the wrong color on one of the clouds, but I realized very quickly what I was doing and pulled the misplaced yarn out with some tweezers and kept on going. I like to show my mistakes, but I just didn't get great footage of that one. My camera work needs a little bit of practice sometimes. Time to wrap up the final Pokemon Ghastly, giving his fangy maw a nice coat of light pink. And then installing his patented Mr. T beard and hairdo. It would have been hilarious to leave it just like that, but I'm a man on a mission. I wanted to make sure Ghastly's face wasn't too dark. His face is sort of a charcoal color, so instead of just straight black yarn, we're using gunmetal gray. All that's left is filling in both tones for our floaty clouds. A nice teal background and a bright orange foreground. I think it helps brighten up the whole image a little bit. Now all that's left is the final layer of sky.
and all the tufting is completely done. And I was more than relieved. That was quite a lot of tufting. Like I said earlier, that was easily 25 hours or more. Quite the grind. And quite the mess on the floor. And now we're destroying the beautiful image with dollop after dollop of carpet adhesive. Once the back is fully saturated with glue, we'll leave it to dry for a day or two. And after a couple of days, we can begin pulling our rug off of the frame, just yanking it right off the nails. So with the rug removed from the frame and laid down flat, we can then trim off the excess cloth to make it just a little bit more manageable, which will then cut into bite-sized chunks all the way around. Then we'll bust out our hot glue gun and our glue sticks, and we'll get to glue in each individual piece down to the back, rolling it over slightly to give it a nice waterfall edge. We can place our backing material onto it the way we want it and trim it out to fit. Normally I show how I glue the backing material to the back of the rug, but sadly I lost that footage. It happens sometimes. And then all that's left to do is just shave it up. Just going row after row, passing each bit, taking off all the high spots, making sure we have a nice uniform rug. And with that, we're all done. Let's take a look at how we did. This was quite the project. It took me a very long time. When I started this channel, I wanted to post a video a week and this has taken me about a month, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's big, it's beautiful, it's soft, and the Pokemon look pretty sharp. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed watching me make this goofy rug. And in the future, I will do some more big ones, but I think my next project is gonna be a little smaller because this one really took it out of me. So anyways, I thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and give me a like, it helps me out a lot, and until then, I'll see you next time with more Goofy Rugs.